Hey everyone, in this video we'll talk about the t-distribution, which is one of those statistical concepts that sounds intimidating at first, but it's actually quite intuitive once you see what problem is trying to solve. And I promise that by the end of the video, you'll understand not just what it is, but why we need it and when to use it. So, let's start with a common scenario that you might find in real life. Imagine you are trying to figure out the average height of all students at a university. And obviously, you can't measure everyone because that would take forever and cost too much money. So instead, you do what statisticians always do, which is take a sample. Now, here is where things get tricky. Because when you take that sample of let's say 30 students and calculate their average height, you know that's probably close to the true average of all students but you don't know exactly how close. And this uncertainty is what statistics is all about managing. In an ideal world, if you knew the true standard deviation of the entire population, which we call sigma, you could use the normal distribution to figure out how confident we should be about our sample mean. And this works beautifully because of something called the central limit theorem, which tells us that sample means follow a normal distribution. But here is the catch, we almost never know the true population standard deviation and instead we have to estimate it from our sample, using what we call the sample standard deviation or S. And this is where William Gossett, who published under the name student while working at Guinness Brewery, realized we had a problem. You see, when we use the sample standard deviation, instead of the true population standard deviation, we are adding another layer of uncertainty to our calculations. And it's kind of like trying to measure something with a ruler that's slightly bendy. Not only are you uncertain about the measurement itself, but you are also uncertain about how accurate your measuring tool is. This double uncertainty means that the normal distribution doesn't quite work anymore especially when our sample size is small, because with a small sample, our estimate of the standard deviation could be quite far off from the true value. So Gosset developed the t-distribution to account for this extra uncertainty. And the key insight was that when we calculate what's called a t-statistic, which is the sample mean minus the population mean, divided by the standard error, where we use s divided by the square root of n, this statistic, follows a specific distribution that has heavier tails than the normal distribution. These heavier tails are really important because they reflect the fact that where we are estimating the standard deviation from a small sample, we are more likely to see extreme values than we would if we knew the true standard deviation. The shape of the t-distribution depends on something called degrees of freedom which for a simpler case, like estimating a mean, is just n minus 1, where n is our sample size. And the reason it's n minus 1, rather than n, has to do with the fact that once you know the sample mean, and n minus 1 of the data points, the last data point is determined. So you have really got only n minus 1 independent pieces of information. When the degrees of freedom are small, like when you have a sample of only 5 or 6 observations, the t-distribution looks quite different from the normal distribution with much heavier tails, which means you need to be more conservative in your conclusions because extreme values are more likely. And as your sample size increases, and therefore your degrees of freedom increases as well, something really nice happens. The t-distribution starts looking more and more like the normal distribution, and this makes intuitive sense because with a larger sample, your estimate of the standard deviation becomes more accurate and that extra uncertainty we were worried about becomes less and less important. And by the time you get to about 30 degrees of freedom, the t-distribution is so close to the normal distribution that for many practical purposes, you can just use the normal distribution. Which is why you'll often see this rule of thumb that says if n is greater than 30, just use the normal distribution. But here's what I really find elegant about the t-distribution. It automatically adjusts for sample size in exactly the right way, giving you wider confidence intervals when you have less data and narrow ones when you have more data. 
And this is exactly what you want intuitively. Think about it this way. If I asked you to estimate the average height of people in your country based on measuring just three people, you would want to express a lot of uncertainty in your answer. But if you measured a thousand people, you'd be much more confident. And the t-distribution captures this perfectly. The practical implications of understanding the t-distribution are huge, especially in fields like medicine, psychology, and quality control, where sample sizes are often small due to cost or ethical constraints. For example, if you are testing a new drug and can only afford to test it on 20 patients, you need to use the t-distribution to properly account for the uncertainty in your results, and using the normal distribution instead would make you overconfident and could lead to wrong conclusions about whether the drug actually works. Also, one thing that often confuses people is when to use the t-distribution versus the z-distribution or the normal distribution. And the rule here is actually pretty simple. If you know the population standard deviation, which is rare, use the Z distribution. But if you are estimating the standard deviation from your sample, which is almost always the case, use the T distribution. The only exception is when your sample size is large enough, typically over 30, that the difference between the two distributions becomes negligible. And even then, using the T distribution isn't wrong. It's just that the results will be virtually identical to using the normal distribution. The T distribution also shows up in contexts like regression, analysis, and comparing means between two groups. And in each case, the underlying principle is the same. We're accounting for the extra uncertainty that comes from estimating parameters from our data rather than knowing them exactly. This is why understanding the t-distribution isn't about memorizing when to use it, but really grasping the fundamental idea that estimation introduces uncertainty, and our statistical methods need to reflect that. So, to summarize what we have learned, the t-distribution is your friend when you are working with small samples and you need to estimate the population standard deviation from your data and it automatically gives you the right amount of caution by having heavier tails than the normal distribution, with the effect being strongest for small samples and gradually disappearing as your sample size increases. So, the next time you see a confidence interval or a hypothesis that mentions T instead of Z, you'll know that someone is being appropriately careful about the uncertainty in their estimates. And that's really what good statistics is all about. Being honest about what we know and what we don't know. And that's basically it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this explanation. Share your thoughts in the comments below. And subscribe to be up to date with the content I create on this channel. See you next time. Bye bye.